Allison, I'd love to know a bit about your career journey and how you got to where you are. Oh, uh, again, I don't know where to start on, on this one. I, so currently today, I, I work as a director of HR, which is very different from one company to another. But how it all started, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do out of high school. And into college, I, I kind of like went to the past and I studied in France. So like education is very different. And you have, you know, you have the general colleges and you also have like preparatory schools. And I went into one of them and eventually then up like loving it. So I arrived at university where it's basically like the open world and you can have like different classes and you just pick and choose. And so I ended up going into a history major and through that uh, curriculum, I really got into sociology, anthropology, and I've always had this curiosity and appetite for people and, and just like understanding who they are and always been fascinated by like this the stories and I think like you know I, I always like felt that when I had those meaningful conversation I would like just get out of this conversation like almost replenished and fulfilled and so doing sociology and anthropology was definitely something that like was in the back of my mind and I eventually like did that on the side as well as my studies um, and actually the last year of my master's, um, I got to come to the U.S. to finish my degree and I was working on border identities, focusing on women. And it was just like a very, uh, like mm -hmm. now I'm laughing out loud because my, 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 thes my thesis was like definitely not uh, very uh, narrowed and focused, mm -hmm. but that explained kind of like how I was so interested in so many things, but I was like mostly interested in like that notion of identity. And so that mm -hmm. took me to working um, at the UN in gender-based violence. And I was working across different teams, different organizations. I had incredible people and, and definitely people that I would call mentors. And throughout time, and, and now it's been almost like six, seven years, like I feel like I have... Um, like it, things have changed around. Now they come to me for advice on different things because now I, I have this HR hat. But um, yeah, I, I, I like it. it was it was super interesting because I, I, I really thought I would end up in, in the international field. And I've always like wanted to do something for advocacy, whether it was being a lawyer or just like do something that had a purpose and a meaning. And um, I actually changed like the course of my route and I ended up in tech somehow and that's how I ended up at Hired where we both worked together and I had no idea what you know like skills in, in the tech space were or like frameworks and so I learned basically from scratch and from mm -hmm. people like around me people like you that had more experience and and just like you know developing the skill set that I already had in terms of like you know setting people up for success and really owning their voice and and because I was coaching tech candidates and it was super interesting because I think like the conversations and the people that I was coaching that really left a big um a big impact on me were the people that were like they were struggling finding what it is that they wanted to do and what made them happy and I remembered one of the questions that I would always ask was, um, what is important for you in your job search? What is important for you in your next move? Is it title? Is it compensation? Is it time? Is it long-term, short-term? And I think like just asking that question just like helps people figure out like, okay, like what are my top three priorities? And mm -hmm. just like, you know, shift that focus from there. And coaching so many people, you start asking yourself those kind of questions. Oh, yeah. And um, I think like, you know, it, it helps like also like having been in that position and understanding how companies like hire their, the company culture, the hiring manager side of things. Um, it was super interesting because I, I felt like I wanted to do that more internally and see how that would grow and how, how these people that you would essentially hire would become who they are in internally in an organization. And so um, I had this opportunity to join a very early stage French tech company. And at the time when I joined, there were like 15, 20 in New York and about 40 in Paris. And um, I, I joined as like 
I don't recall like my title. It was like a mix of everything, but I was essentially doing everything Start from up. office, from, yeah, it's, it's just like wearing different hats and, um, mm. and rapidly. And I was working directly with the CEO for about a year and a half during my time there. And rapidly, I realized what I really enjoyed doing was like this business partnering aspect, which, mm-hmm. which is like, in combination with like the company culture, the company vision, supporting like all the the projects and processes that we had in place when it came to like the employee and the people experience, but also really be a partner to Mm -hmm. not just leaders, not just mid-level management, but also employees to have like a sound ear when, Mm -hmm. you know, they needed advice or, or someone to talk to. And Typically, like I never woke up one day and said I want to do HR. I feel like HR is like the kind of people that you stay away from. <laughs> uh, but I, I yeah. really had this desire to change that. And I think like why I had such a such a inspiration in doing that is because I think like in most of your experiences in life, and that's just not valid for work, like you don't really know what you're looking for, what you want, but you learn definitely along the way what you don't want. And that's through mm-hmm. people, experiences, situations that you've been put in. And I, I, you know, in my work today, and, and it hasn't really changed much in terms of, you know, maybe I have changed, you know, titles or changed companies, but I feel like what, what kept constant was always my desire to drive change, to really mm-hmm. empower people. And also knowing that like when you empower someone's voice, you're also helping the company shape its vision and not just like shape its vision outside of the people being part mm-hmm. of that, but with them. And I think like that's definitely a dynamic that um that is, you know, still fascinating to me. And I feel like there's so much work to be done on that aspect. So that's how I got where I got. And I don't know if <laughs> like that's a that's a solid answer, but it's it's somehow yeah. where, how I got here. <laughs> you know what? I think a lot of people who might be trying to navigate their career might feel this doubt about where they are because they they're expecting this linear path you know, they're expecting to see a linear path. But um, anytime I talk to anyone who, you know, quote unquote, has that success on their resume, typically you'll see some twists and turns, even if they might not have branded themselves that way. I think on the outside, we tend to see the tip of the iceberg. We see this polished uh, professional, but what happens uh-huh. behind that or what it took to get there, often there's some twists and turns and, um, you know, some tough questions and no doubt, you know, um, some some moments of pause too, right? So something that I heard in your story, which you you ended there with was this passion to empower people. So as HR uh-huh. director, I totally see that you're obviously spearheading, you know, that um, culture and that dynamic for an organization. So currently, I understand that you're at Daily Motion. Can you tell us a little bit more about your role there? And what have you been up to lately? Yeah. Um. So when I joined Daily Motion, it was super interesting to me because that would have been my second French company. And I I definitely feel at ease. And I think like we can relate speaking a little bit of French as well. I think like when you have those skill set, those languages, those different ways of thinking, um, it's really important to be able to put that into into your work and, and what you're doing, because I feel like that's how you feel most aligned with where, where you should be. Um, so when I joined, um, I mean, we're big, like there's a big presence in France. We have people in the APAC region and then we have the U.S. and Latin America that we're expanding. And so when I joined last year in December of 2020, it was definitely a transition period for, for them, the, defining the vision. Back in 2017, they were acquired by um, a big French group that that owns other companies as well. And so for me, that was like super interesting to understand like how working it was not the it's it's funny because it's not the startup world anymore, but it's still Mm -hmm. functioning like in that like space of like chaos, but also creativity and and possibilities to try things and to shift. Mm -hmm. But like it's always that constant, like, you know, um, diligence about keeping the vision and keeping that at least midterm uh, vision that can really rally people behind what we're doing. Um, so when I joined, it was 
basically kind of, you know, taking over the, um, the HR side of things on, on the U.S. side, but not just that. I realized that, like, there's a, there was a strong um, will to really drive a global um, initiative when it came to, like, the, the culture, the people, what we're doing, and the effort to really bridge the gaps that have been created through time, which happens, you know, mm-hmm. when you have offices throughout the world, I think, like, it, it can be really... Um, hard for for the smaller offices to feel heard and seen and so it felt right down my alley so I mm-hmm. think like you know I um, I was I like I, I'm still doing like a lot of the the work in the weeds as well like I feel like you know when you take on such a, a challenge it's like being able to roll up your sleeves and like just you know do things that you've done in the past and also encounter you know different people and and just kind of um I really believe all of us are systems and when we join a company, we mm-hmm. join a system and I think it's all about how that like energy works around and like that's how, how I think about organizational change it's like okay what is working today what is not working and so I feel like when you start a new a new role especially like in in HR like you don't want to step in and say okay I'm gonna do this and change this that's never the right move I feel like being an observer and like also absorbing the the different things that you're exposed to having as many one-on-ones I think like that's uh that's a sociologist Mm -hmm. in me I feel like you know um there's this this thing that I remember um I didn't know that expression back then but when I joined my first company hired I remember people putting time on my calendar and saying hey can I pick your brain and I would go back yeah. home and I would call my mom and I'm like <laughs> I'll want to pick my brain I don't know what does that mean and I took yeah. that on that habit and I realized that like throughout my different experiences like mm-hmm. and and it was so funny because like the first reaction to people like when I started putting those one-on-ones they were like do I need to prepare anything? Am I in trouble? Mm-hmm. And I, that made me realize like the, 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 you know, the vision that we usually have of the HR and like us being proactive. And I, I yeah. really emphasis on that because I feel like we're in a time and in, in any company, whether we're small or big, there's always that impulse, especially today mm-hmm. to really react with, and, and not be proactive. And I, and even my, with myself, like I always put that discipline of like, you know, not procrastinating, but like trying to also like take that distance to like think mm-hmm. and like see things in a bigger picture rather than, than react. And I think like the, those taking the time to do those one-on-ones to understand someone's vision and understand the bigger picture and kind of like forge your own opinion of that really sets you up for for success and at least like kind of owning mm-hmm. the 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 position that you're in but also it's not just the position when I say that it's not about the title it's really about the presence and I think like mm-hmm. even more so um I onboarded remotely I didn't meet my boss until two months after um who's sitting in in Paris and I for me that was in my head it clicked I was like okay I'm definitely on board this is real but I I really like thrive to understand how you can create a presence how people can understand and get to know you for who you Mm -hmm. are through a screen and I think that's really not easy the notion of being intentional of not like you know doing a million things when you're like having this conversation Mm -hmm. is so important because it just shows to people that you care um and I really like you know my my work at Daily Motion was really about like building that connection in the first place with people and and really building that foundation to help people hit the round running even when you know we're in a in the company where like things need to still be like uh, supported and foundations need to happen from a business perspective. But I think like if you have this like drive and impulse to say to people, mm-hmm. you're also part of building that vision. It's not, yeah. you know, just being there and sitting like you also mm-hmm. have that autonomy and that that creativity that can really contribute to the bigger picture. I think like a lot of the times and it happens to mm-hmm. all of us, like we just like sit and wait for change to happen but that's like the worst mistake because like we just sit there and we're like okay like it's like when you're in a meeting and like no one is holding themselves accountable for like what part of the project Mm -hmm. they're going to focus on and we're just like doing a round table but how does that connect and I think like in all not just in HR like there needs to be like those people that are connectors facilitators Mm -hmm. and that can move along the organization to really create the 
connection that needs to happen and that people are really Mm -hmm. thriving to see but they don't know how to you know they either it's not their personality or like they they're more introverted and so like kind of how how do you encourage that impulse and I think it's really by leading by example so um Mm -hmm. that was mostly you know my work when I first started today it's really about like how it's really business focused like how do we really support um the business while supporting people as well. We have a lot of people that, you know, new people that started during during the, the pandemic and so mm-hmm. that didn't even meet each other yet. So it's it's like wow. how do you rethink that culture? How do you build trust? And I think like it's really, you know, it doesn't weigh on just myself, but I think mm-hmm. it weighs on so many different components. And I need to really like, you know, be that, that one driving or like, you know, letting the manager know or letting the team members or suggesting ideas or really be a business partner to not just, again, the executive level, but also like the people that really need more guidance on a day-to-day, not just on admin things. And I think like, that's where we have this like discipline as, as, you know, being in the people function where we have this duty to show that like, we're not just there in the wrong moments, but we're there to Mm -hmm. really support you on a day to day when you just need to chat eventually. I love that. Yeah. I think a lot of people have this idea that if HR schedules a one-on-one with you, oh no, I've done something wrong. This could be the end of my career. Um, But we don't want that feeling, right? So you know that HR is not doing their job if if that's the feeling people get. Um, So to your point, you as an HR business partner, I mean, I know as a director currently, but you know, you are being that business partner, um, not just to leaders, but as you mentioned, to employees as exactly. well you're there to you know start conversations and pull ideas and creativity um, from people that to your point either don't have the personality or may feel they don't have the autonomy um, you know they were all hired for a reason and we want to make sure that everybody has a voice and is contributing yeah. and is able to advocate for themselves but also really focus on the business and sometimes some of the quieter people have the best solutions so having a culture where people can speak up and introduce those ideas and solutions oftentimes help a company create that consensus needed to kind of, you know, change things or produce better outcomes, right? True, true. And I and I feel like, you know, you brought up a really interesting point on, um, it's not just in my current role, but um, especially throughout 2020, I felt like my you know, one of the things that I remember is um, it was it was a rough time for me. Like I went through a lot, like personally, uh, like I, I broke up with like my boyfriend of like three years and a half. He had like a breakdown and, and uh-huh. like not really a breakdown. It was a light decision, but he moved to Montana. I decided not to follow. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just took that like I didn't struggle uh, mentally because I was always already in the headspace mm-hmm. of like I like this time is happening for a reason and I need to sit with it and we often feel like you know we need to run away from like I'm, I'm a very positive person mm-hmm. but I do think like we all go through you know moments where like we just don't feel great or like yeah. we don't, our, our mindset is not high and I think like not running away from that feeling but sitting with it and and accepting it but not letting it be who we are mm-hmm. like at from like you know from that point on and I think like um what I realized is that my my role I always had those one-on-ones and I would always like you know do coffee lunch or like Mm -hmm. sit in a room with someone and and really like do that that like one-on-one work but I realized like through this time and even going this this through personally myself like I people started opening up more and I had to Mm -hmm. do more of a conscious effort to really be present in those conversations and people like that's where like uh, people have always like been open to me and in, in, in speaking which I, I really take pride in and I don't mm-hmm. take that lightly I feel like that trust is something that you earn no matter what and I think like it's by being constant being authentic in who you are and and I think like it's um it's it's hard right when you're in HR because mm-hmm. sometimes it's like you need to find like the right like boundary and line and I think mm-hmm. like you can not just share everything with someone and yeah. even just in general you may hurt someone by like sharing something and it's just like how 
always asking yourself, how can I really help that person find the solutions within them or give them hints so they can really mm -hmm. drive that um, questioning by themselves. But so many people during that time when I was like going through that kind of like self-reflection mm -hmm. myself were opening up and saying, hey, like, you know, I, I have a learning disability, I have ADHD or have an invisible disability. And mm -hmm. not just that, but like, I started seeing people, even though I was seeing them physically, like already in person, in a very different light. And that just made me realize that like, there's really a shift today in how companies should think about the future of their company culture mm -hmm. and what they're building. It's no longer about how does, you know, people fit, how do people fit in my organization, but it's how am I going to create an, an environment where people are not just fits, but they're also cultural additions. And I think like, and most and foremost, that principle and I had a full on, not argument, but an interesting conversation <laughs> with like yeah. a French counterpart who was like, yeah, but the fit is really important. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, but you're probably using the wrong term because it's true. Like you don't want to put someone in a position and set them for failure if like they're exposed to like, you know, already an environment that can be toxic and things need to be rectified. Like you have to really see the potential of that person to really grow and take mm -hmm. on and really have a voice and be respected for that. But I, I do think somewhat of a challenge, like also if you mm -hmm. have like the proper, the proper support, like it really helps you build that assertivity. Like, I, and I feel like I have a soft spot when it comes to, you know, typically, typically people that like sometimes like really doubt their voice. That mm -hmm. is women, that is underrepresented communities. Those are young people. Those are like more junior levels. And I feel like everyone has their seat at the table. And instead of thinking of like organizations in a very pyramidal way, like it's thinking yeah. about more of a circular way of thinking, how can we structure this company together as a circle and not just like you sit in your corner, you do what you know mm -hmm. you do best and they don't even know what, to, what they're doing best. And I feel like, you know, maybe your best is, is even better. You just don't know it yet. If you're mm -hmm. in an organization that, you know, puts you in a category and you cannot move from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that distinction between a pyramid, you know, org structure versus a circle is so key. And I know that many tech companies strive for that or they claim that but I wouldn't say it's necessarily true all the time as we you know uh, get in and we observe and I know that there is a, almost an obsession with culture fit um, even though anyone in the HR space has heard of the term culture ad but how do we actually go about you know um enforcing that right and how do we actually yeah. produce an environment and how do we change the hearts and minds of leaders that I totally understand they want to protect the culture but you know the the reality is that as your company scales the culture isn't necessarily going to scale with it it's going to evolve right that's and true. and yeah. I think that's important right you need a different yeah. culture for a different stage of your of your journey in, in the career, in the company, right? Um, True. So what are some unique ways or suggestions that you have for people to maybe embrace culture ad in a company? You know, it's it's really about education. And I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, when you're in talent, like in, in, in HR, it's really about like repeating the same things over and over again, and also changing yourself, like checking your mm -hmm. own biases. And like, we all have biases. I remember of this um, woman who was giving a talk about biases. She doesn't say a word. She just goes on stage. There's this video playing and it's about a little boy who's in a car accident with his mom. He goes, he's rushed to the hospital and the doctor says, I cannot operate on this patient because he's my son. And the question is like, who is the doctor? 99% of the room thought like said, well, it can be, it can be, you know, the, the, the dad or like, a, like a, I'm sorry, I'm like saying the story in the, in the wrong <laughs> yeah. way, but essentially he was in the car with his dad, not who was his mom. And, uh, and uh. the doctor happened to be the mom. And in so, and, and so many people's mindset, they, they, they couldn't conceive that the doctor was the mom. And I think mm -hmm. like that just goes by saying that we have a lot of biases that like, and, and preconceptions and mm -hmm. ideas and mm -hmm. that were 
embedded of as how we grew up and, and our cultures and, and how our language structures sometimes our thoughts. And I think like going back to, to, to that point, it's like really education and spending time and really being business partners when it comes to like the hiring stage or, and even like, you know, it, it's, it's all throughout the employee journey. It's like, how mm -hmm. do we give people channels and, and voices to really give that feedback? And so really like always checking with yourself as like an HR team or a talent team member, but also really having reinforcing that work of like educating the hiring managers, really like, you know, also teaching, like, even if you're like a junior talent person, like when you're working directly with a hiring manager, like if they're seeing a candidate and like their main reason of like turning them down is like oh she didn't seem that dynamic it's just like mm -hmm. well but like concretely through the questions that you know you ask like what are the things that like she said or, or he said and what, what did you think about it like you, you it's really going above the surface mm -hmm. and going beyond and seeing someone's potential and I think like even in my own and I'm probably biased to that extent but like I when I hire someone on my team like I sure okay like you know the the previous experiences matter but it's really about like your ability to 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 you know transform that that experience and, and really like it's not about like BSing or or it's yeah. really about like how do you put that in action concretely? Give me stories and things that you're really proud of where you're like, mm -hmm. you know, you stood up for someone, you stood up uh, to, to a hiring manager that was, you know, difficult to work with. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like understanding how that person's ability to like, you know, use a skill set and not just like hide behind like systems or tools yeah. and, and really like being able to use that magic because I think like that's mm -hmm. really your own magic. And I've always like hired incredible people. Like I'm super proud and I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, it's, it's like, I always say like, I'm, I'm there to support their voice as much as I'm supporting the people mm -hmm. that come on board and I get to partner with. And like, they, it's just like a, about building that confidence. I think like when there's that one person that believes mm -hmm. in you in a company and that gives you that chance and that really like has this genuine care to see you be happy not just succeed mm -hmm. because succeed means so many different things for so many different people right and I think it really it really like empowers you to to step into your own whatever that may be and means but I think like mm -hmm. it's, it's really not about like being put immediately in a category but seeing how that that person can evolve like you know when we hire so it's like, what is the long-term vision for that person? Like they're high, they were being hired at like a level one, level two, depending how companies talk about it. But like, what is that growth path for that person? Like, what could they be mm -hmm. doing or how could they grow? And I think like already, if you ask that at like a, you know, in your interview process, like I always mm -hmm. see that as like a great point because that means like people are already thinking about like that next step and projecting themselves. And I think mm -hmm. like that's always a really good question to, to ask and, and be really like, you know, ask like those specific questions, not just necessarily about the role that you're going for, right. but also for what's next, because that's important. Yeah, I think a lot of people will respond to the question, where do you see yourself in five years from now? with sort of, oh, you know, I don't even know what I'm having for lunch today, five years from now, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, which is totally yeah. fair. We don't have a crystal ball, but I think it's a really great question or a great thought exercise at the least to kind of see where your head is at, right? Or where your vision is, what your what your mission might be or what that consistent theme might be for you, right? So uh -huh. kind of how you mentioned, you know, even though you had your twists and turns in your career, the one constant for you, it seems, was investing in people and empowering people, right? Um, so yeah. I think answering the question, where do you see yourself in five years? There's so much value for a hiring manager just to kind of understand where somebody's long-term vision is and whether they can support that growth and um, how they can support that growth, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, because we hope, right, it's not just the hiring manager, but even, you know, on the employee side, both sides really want a long-term partnership to work out. Um, but mm -hmm. it's, it's really hard to say because so much happens over the course of life and a company's life. But um, oh, yeah. I, I think, you know, just these little 
um, little tests or thought exercises to see what comes up, you know, when we think about the long term future um, uh -huh. can give us a clue as to whether or not this is going to be the right environment, the right career path, whether um, we might need to do some work for this individual that we really want to bring on. But now I know these are some clues that they've given me as to how to retain them and what I can do to create a succession plan that's going to keep them around. Right. Yeah. And and I think like, you know, it, 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 everything that you said is, is so accurate. And I just like it speaks so much to me because I just had a conversation mm -hmm. this morning that really resonates with that. And I said to that person, if you don't ask, you're never going to get that information because mm -hmm. there's so many things that, you know, as you said, like, you know, you ask to someone even you see over what I think like the key to when you're in a managing position or a leadership position, whatever it may be. It's like when you're a parent, like you mm -hmm. avoid having, you know, arguments in front of your kids or, or you avoid like, you know, and it's okay. Like it's, it can yeah. be hard because we're all humans, you know, we all have our moments. I think being like candid and, and authentic and having, you know, breakdowns like that, that is vulnerable. And I think like mm -hmm. that is great because it just shows to your team that you're, you're, you're human too. But I think it's so important to keep that constant and, and to really be, you know, that support. And also mm -hmm. like, it's the other way around too, but really like, you know, that, that it's, it's through trust that you build that. And I think like, it, it really is, is, you know, you lead by example. And I think like when you're in a position where people look up to you and, little do they know that you also look up to them as well like one of the things that I I, I got recently it's like you know a CEO that, that said I look forward to learning from you and I was like yeah. how how am I gonna teach that person <laughs> that has like yeah. 50 years of experience like something and and you know, that really gave me such a great confidence and I think like mm -hmm. it just like resonated with me so much and you said something too I, I think like you know my that passion and that drive asking myself where I'm going to be in five years I don't really know I just want to do something that like I'm proud I'm that uh, it's going beyond my my myself and mm -hmm. that it's actually contributing to something that's having an impact and helping people and that I'm also doing that work internally but in all my email work emails I have I always have a quote at the end of, of my emails mm -hmm. and there's this woman that I have so much inspiration from uh Maya Angelou she said yeah. people will forget what you did people will forget what you said but people ne will never forget how you made them feel and I think like you know there's yeah. people that show up in your life at a very different moment that you lose sight of and then you reconnect for one reason and they will say and I've and I've said that too to some some people they don't even know they had an impact on me but I still remember mm -hmm. them to, to the day because they helped me become who I am and and really you know like said something at the right time you were talking mm -hmm. about this earlier and I think like sometimes it's like really about the moment it's like when you're listening to a song and it really hits that like mindset that you're mm -hmm. in and you're like hitting your stride and I think like it's so important like the the way the way that you uh, show up to to the world and how you you choose wisely the 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 words that that you're having in a conversation or how you carry yourself when you have a meeting or a presentation it matters so much and I think like it's it's not about being constantly under under the radar but it's yeah. really being authentic like some days like as we said like we have can mm -hmm. have a hard day and just like showing up to your team and say okay I'm having a rough day, but I really yeah. care about this and I care about you guys or like changing the perspective too. I think like not, we talked about like, you know, having this linear path, things are not linear. Life is not linear and life is movement. And I think sometimes like you need people that can be, um, there's that concept, you know, of trickster, like people that kind of like mm. change your way around of thinking about something and you're like, <laughs> you're, you're leaving the conversation and you're like, wow, okay, I need to sit with that because it really changed my perspective on something. Yeah. And I think like it's uh, it's really by by being, you know, kind and caring and, and really like listening and not just like hearing what people are mm -hmm. saying and, and really try to find ways to like put that into action. I think like there is a lot of the times there's not a, a big place for, for emotions in the workplace or when you mm -hmm. talk about, empathy or caring like or kindness like you just like pass for a hippie I literally got called <laughs> a hippie 
by my former CEO <laughs> that I, I really look up to and I appreciate, but I was just like, wow, like, just because <laughs> I really believe in those things. And, and I think, yeah. you know, when I left, he said, you know, you're not really a hippie. And I said, that's where you're wrong. I'm a pragmatic hippie. And so that, that <laughs> yeah. meant that I knew how to take the ideals and try to put it in the, the concrete day to day. But it's, um, it's really, you know, you're always like confronted to, mm -hmm. to, to people that, that will kind of like, you know, because they don't know yet, or they're not mm -hmm. asking the, themselves those questions, but it's really about believing in you, I think. And, you know, trusting that, that voice, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's like, I feel versus I think, and I think like, it's, mm -hmm. it's so important to, to really find that right balance and really trusting that inner voice that we just like mm -hmm. push away most of the time, because we're having those blinders and you know we have the title we have the compensation but mm -hmm. are you happy are you thriving are you putting <laughs> your talents to to action you know ask yourself those questions and I think like it's uh it, it just you know what you put into the world mm -hmm. eventually like you know comes into full blossom and and it's it's just seeds but maybe you know one, two, three years, like your podcast, you thought about this for some time and like yeah. it turned into, a uh, manifested into reality. And I think like it's a, uh, everything starts with a dream and an intuition yeah. and a feeling. And I think like, it's, it's so important to keep that in mind. We all started with something like that. And no matter who we are or how old we are, like there's, there's something that ignites us that is like beyond kind of you know mm -hmm. the things that we're told it's like trusting that that intuition as well I love that and I think what you said earlier about how life is movement right I think that just ties your point so well that we have these seeds that we plant and it takes time right for them to bloom um, but it really is just about taking as you mentioned those ideals and being pragmatic putting them into action um, and and I think that's where a lot of HR individuals a lot of HR folks you know it's our job to create these environments where people feel comfortable planting these seeds and we we provide them with the tools we provide them with these actions to you know really manifest within the organization right and I uh -huh. think there's just you know so much that we do that might not always seem like there's you know, um, a checkbox that we can tick off or an ROI no. or number necessarily, but um, it all just ends up producing in, in ways that we might not necessarily get the credit or that we might not necessarily, you know, have um, necessarily the receipts, but, um, yeah. you know, it, it really is part and parcel of creating um, the soil really for for everything that blooms in the organization so it's it's sort of that thing where I totally see why a CEO would call you or even other HR folks you know the <sighs> um, it, it doesn't help with my with my curly hair you know I remember that, that yeah. one, one instant someone told me I had straight hair and they were like oh you should do your hair more like that it looks more professional oh, and wow. I was just like Wow. And that came from a man, obviously. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're not talking too much about this, but I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. when, when you're, you're still bu building that, that assertivity and that presence, mm -hmm. you're confronted to, you know, people that will, that will definitely challenge you in so many ways mm -hmm. and make things out of yourself and like, you know, how you present, like we've been, we've been through screens and I think like, that's definitely going to be like the, the future is going to be hybrid, uh, like a mm -hmm. mix of in-person and, and, and through zoom and, or yeah. uh, other mediums. But I think it's, it's just like something where you have to really build like a certain strength uh, about like those yes. comments and like try to find ways to also educate. I think it's, mm -hmm. um, reacting and 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 kind of like playing uh, along their the the lines of like what they just said is not mm -hmm. going to help but like really speaking in your voice and like finding a way to just like plant a message I feel oh, like yeah. you're also helping other people along the way but um I feel it's so important especially for 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 young women for mm -hmm. for any woman I feel like it's and and just like people that that don't you know necessarily feel like you know they have the legitimacy to speak mm -hmm. like everyone you have a voice you can speak like your yes. your words and your your ideas matter and I think like it's so important to have like 
to create like that kind of drive. And I think like, mm -hmm. you know, we're accountable as like HR, as people that are working on the executive level to really embody that. I think like mm -hmm. how they speak, how they lead their meetings, how do they give a voice to their team members, not just their direct reports and how it's like communicated and, and, and you know, transmit it. It's so mm -hmm. important. Like there's, there's so much intentionality that needs to happen at that level. And I think that's why, you know, talking about, empathy kindness care intention mm -hmm. is so important because that's where true leadership is rooted and that's how you are a good leader is when you lead the way by values that like just make people feel like they're joining what you're trying to mm -hmm. say or trying to build and have their own ideas like brought to the table I love that. That is so beautiful. And I think more leaders should definitely try to embody um, what you just mentioned around having kindness, care, empathy as values that they lead with and mm -hmm. asking their team to join um, rather than I think what we have been hearing about and we, what we try to, you know, um, work against um, now in this new future era of work is the whole top down and pyramid, right? Right. So we want to oh. see more circles and um, opportunities for more connection. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was thinking because I knew we were going to speak and, and I was walking. I, I think a lot when I walk my dog mm -hmm. like or, or, or in the morning, like when I'm by yeah. myself and doing my, my little meditation. And I was like, wow, there's so many tools that have arised in HR and, and everything yeah. and admin. And I'm like, how is my work still very admin focused? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still going to be a person behind the data, the number, putting mm -hmm. like all of the things like in, in a pretty setting. So it looks, you know, readable and, and accessible mm -hmm. to other people like reading it. But I'm just like, I really need to think about like, what is the future of HR? And like, mm -hmm. if like tools and systems are going to be substitute to like a lot of like the work that we used to hire people for, like exactly. that very notion of like, I, I might be a director, but like my, my true profound title and like how I really see my, my work is like a connector, a mediator mm -hmm. and a business partner. Like I, I feel like it's, it's, it's so it's so interesting to have this mindset because that's where like you know the real it's it's putting back the, the notion of people where exactly it needs to be it's like you know having those conversations like being part of those like you know strategic meetings and how do we like not just treat that on the side but really incorporate mm -hmm. it in the day-to-day -day. and I feel like you know it's um Th that's sometimes like the mistake that that we do like there's such a structured way of looking at the company that like you know mm -hmm. even topics like dni that are so important that are part of like every part of the strategy and like you know no matter what company you're in like it's it's how do we incorporate those values that we believe in into all the things that we do not just like okay we're gonna mm -hmm. have like a team dedicated to this or to that and I feel like that notion of business partnering mm -hmm. is going to be really something that's going to rise more and more into the HR side of things. And like, you know, those tools that are arising mm -hmm. and are becoming more and more intelligent and like, you know, synchronizing with other tools, it's, it's definitely making me think of like, where is my added value? And, yeah. and I know this, but I don't think like a lot of people are thinking about that and thinking about the future yeah. of work, as you said. Absolutely. I think with with tools and systems, we have this added benefit of being able to be creative, right? And create, mm -hmm. create, you know, the culture that we want besides talking about it and besides policing it, right? Mm -hmm. With culture fit, as we were talking about earlier on. Um, yeah. So now we have the creativity and the time, hopefully, to actually play around with the culture ad and see how we can, you know, um, create more synergies between teams and not have as many silos. That's kind of the hope, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, um, there, there needs to be definitely, you know, a, a common effort and really that drive to make things happen. I, one thing I'll, I will say though, is like, I know so many companies were so resistant, like whether they were located mm -hmm. in New York or San Francisco or any like bigger city to like, kind of like hire people remote or oh, yeah. have changed like completely, which it has opened the pool of talent for so many people mm -hmm. that like didn't have the means or the salary at the time that like would make them like 
you know able to work mm-hmm. within within like those big cities and I think like it also changes perspective I, I know that like one of our executives um at Daily Motion was super against like I remember having a conversation where I was like so 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 like I'm really happy this role is going to be remote or at least like we'll be able to be higher remote yeah. and he's like yeah but it, it shouldn't be for everyone in Connecticut and I was just like this is not remote like it's, <laughs> it's like clearly an hour away from the city so yeah it's really that like you know again it's it's about like rep- and not getting discouraged I think like mm-hmm. sometimes people that work on uh, in the people field nowadays especially in tech and in very innovative spaces there's just like that um sometimes you repeat the same things over and mm-hmm. over again because you're confronted to people that don't necessarily understand the impact of certain things and like it's really being patient and and kind towards yourself in the first place and mm-hmm. and not feel defeated when when I usually have a no, it's like, okay, how can I find another way to approach that topic? Because this is so important. And it just, I, I think it's, um, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's really rethinking. Like we used to, it's like, we didn't have, and we were talking about this earlier. It's like, eventually, and I keep hearing that eventually when we get out of this pandemic or like mm-hmm. we go back to normal, we're delaying I mean, it. We're delaying it. And it's just like, you know, it's that, that's um this, you know, and I always go back to this article that came out in the New York Times called uh, Languishing. And it's about like, kind of just like that moment of like, just sitting and languishing like a snail and like also mm-hmm. like the this FOMO like of, of nowadays, like where things are reopening, like and New York is like back to almost where it was, yeah. but like to a certain extent, but it's just like, you know, how do we balance everything? Like we keep in motion and we allow ourselves to wonder and to really feel what it is that we want and what is like mm-hmm. important for us today without like trying to rush things and like try to like, you know, check the box on everything. And I think like yeah. that can, um, that's going to be very interesting. I think like we're, we're still in the midst of it. And I think like, it's going to be really a, the self-discipline that people are going to have to do because you know mm-hmm. the market has never been like that like crazy like companies oh, yeah. are hiring like crazy benefits are changing so much and mm-hmm. I think you know some of the things that company can think of is like okay what are the things that I'm offering today for people because mm-hmm. honestly like flexibility I think is a big one and that like trickles down to benefits that trickles mm-hmm. down to like that ability to have flexible work hours whether you're a parent whether like you you do something else on the side or you have a passion and I feel like those are things that like companies some companies were very resistant to and today it's just like how can we find like the right things for the people joining our companies and what is important to to them and I think like there is um there's still that like thing that of questioning like what we have done in the past what we're doing now and what we need to do for it for for this kind of new mindset of thinking the workplace. Absolutely. We are on the cusp of this new mindset. Some companies have really championed it, right? Uh Um, And I think we're seeing a lot of evidence within the tech space, but unfortunately, a lot of these companies tend to be startups as well. So it's really difficult for Uh them to really live and breathe the whole work-life balance, even though they may provide flexibility. Um, Those are two separate things, right? Like you could be working Uh a flexible schedule, but working many more hours than in a typical nine to five that doesn't budge from that schedule. So, um, so many, so many things to think about, but I really appreciate your time, Allison, and all of your insights on HR and your career journey and, what being a true business partner means um, in today's age. No, thank you so much, Neha. I really appreciate you having me. And I feel like even it has inspired me to like really keep, um, keep you know, driving, driving things the, the way that I've been doing and also challenge myself and new perspectives as well. Like all I ask is to be surprised by like new ideas and concepts. And I love that. I think like there's, there's so many, creative people and creative outlets and we just need to find like a a right way to implement that in in the workplace Mm -hmm. so thank you for having me I really appreciate you